Look at this desktop. This looks like a Mac OS. This operating system is actually called Red Star OS, and it is the operating system of North Korea. Now, this initially was never meant to be seen by the outside world. Then, you know, as people do, they get their hands on it. A copy got out there, and now you can click around and look inside North Korea's operating system, which this OS is specifically designed to watch the user and monitor everything they do. Now, I have the OS booted up right here. Um, this is all in North Korean, so I don't know what it's saying, but we'll click next. And it's searching for installations, unreadable, sure. Oh, continue. This mouse is so sensitive, wow. Oh, okay. Um, admin, admin, sure, password. And password hint, admin. Sure, hostname, admin, PC, let's go with that. And sure, let's go with that location. Or, I wonder if we can do the US. Memphis, yeah. Let's go with it, oh. Be sure, install. It's a cool logo though, for the OS. And I like how it has the spinny wheel, like Mac. Very, very similar. Now, Red Star OS is a North Korean Linux distribution with development first starting in 1998 at the Korea Computer Center. And yes, it is Linux. I think it is based off of Fedora. And this is Red Star's browser which is pronounced Nainara. Uh, it's kind of based off Firefox. And it is the intranet web browser software. For use on the national K1 Myong internet. I don't know if that's how you say that. But this network is North Korea's like internet system so they can only go on this and then like the big people like kim Jong un or whatever they can like access the like actual internet because you can see the network uses domain names under the dot kp top level domain that are not usually accessible from the global internet north koreans often find it more convenient to access sites by their ip address in the 10 dot zero dot zero dot zero slash eight range aka private networks okay it seems i have okay we are booting into red star admin password admin And boom, we're looking like an iMac, pretty much. So everything is in North Korean. Um, we have this down here, the file system and stuff. Utilities. Which, where is the command line? I don't know. Lots of stuff that I can't read, and I don't know what's going on, but it's their file system. Okay, I just watched a YouTube video. This one, this folder, this one, and terminal. That is really hidden. Okay. Um, 
And yeah, it is Linux doing the LS. Okay. So we need to make ourselves as root. We have this command right here, root setting, enter. Um, enter the password. And it is unlocked, so root. Um, okay. I think that worked. Okay. The password was the password I set, which is admin. As you can see, now we are root. Now we need to change this to English so I can actually see what is going on. Okay, we have this command right here, which should change it into English. Oh. It is I-18. Okay, okay. Okay, that should work. And then now I just need to reboot. And then everything will change to English. So fingers crossed everything changes to English. That's just a command I got off of YouTube. And yay, everything is in English. So you can trust things you find off of YouTube. Okay, now let's actually start clicking around because we can read things. I have a calendar, photos, mail, the browser, font book. And this CHM viewer. Like a address book? I I don't know. Dog. I I don't know. I don't know. You got a quick time player, sticky notes. Office. So it's like word. Yep. It is word. What else do we have here? We have our software manager, mail, calculator, app link, preview, system preferences. This thing. Oh, sheet music. When you're in North Korea and you want to experience a little shred of happiness and creativity. Um, let's go to their browser. Ooh. I don't know what this says. And it is HTTP. Okay, just watched a YouTube video. Apparently you can do like an add-on or something. Uh, yeah, this one. Yeah. There we go. Now you actually can't access anything like on their intranet because it's North Korea. Um, unless you have like a North Korean VPN or something. <laughs> but yeah, you can't really access their internet. Though I wish you could because that would be cool. But apparently you can remove the firewall that blocks some of this stuff. Sure, save and quit. Not like it really matters anyway. So 
system preferences, network. DHCP, apply, back applications, app link, utilities, terminal, root, remove, Etsy, IP tables. And then we start and you can see some of the processes right here. SSH agent, shout out. X, they got Twitter on here. Okay, maybe let's try rebooting one more time. See if that works. But apparently there's also something on Red Star, which they have like file watermarking. So like when you create files on here, the file is watermarked. So you know it has come from here. AKA Red Star OS. So that kind of allows people in North Korea to trace like the origins of files and what have you. If you're having trouble accessing Google search, please click here. I'm clicking. It should be here. It should be here. Look, Google. I am clicking here. Maybe we gotta put in the full thing, www dot google dot com there we go just takes a simple reboot let's see north korea nukes Okay, google.com. Why is this like the old Google? YouTube? Oh no. This connection is untrusted. You have asked Nainara to connect securely to YouTube, but we can't confirm your connection is secure. I understand the risks. You have to add an exception, technical details. YouTube.com uses invalid security certificate. Um, add exception. Get certificate. Confirm. Okay, it takes you to YouTube. But nothing is loading. It, but this does look like the layout of old YouTube, which is pretty cool. Your connection to this website is encrypted to prevent eavesdropping okay i guess youtube isn't loading maps i understand the risk add exception yeah i'm feeling lucky doodles.google Odd exception. Oh. It won't let me click on the doodles. Oh, maybe it will. There's our doodle collection. 
Maybe not. Anyways, that's about as much as Red Star as I guess I can access at the moment without diving deeper into some research. But goes to show you, surveillance doesn't always have to require malware, and it can be just like embedded architectural spyware, pretty much. So this is kind of just like an example of some digital authoritarianism, if you will. Anyway, that is it for the video. Make sure to like, subscribe, punch all the buttons in the face, and I'll see you in the next one.